born in the Bahamas, my best friend Moss was conceived by Haitian immigrants. By the time he made it to America, everybody knew who he was. He had a distinctive walk, and this walk was a birth defect. He had his arm, it was kind of like his left arm, it's kind of like this, but he can't bend it straight, and his, and his finger is always in like this. But one thing about this guy, he has the most magnetic personality that God ever gave a human being. He never let his birth defect stop him from joking, stop him from taking a joke, and stop him from doing things that we did. When we was little kids, I took a liking to him, and he became my brother. And he used to tell me all the time, you like my brother. He said, I love you more than I love my own brother. And I protected him. I did everything I can in my power to protect him. Anyhow, when you're in the streets getting money, there's a lot of people that you want to protect. You want to keep them away from the life that you live. He was one of them. He was one of them for me. So every time I came home, I paid my respects to him by giving him wads of cash to tell him to stay out of the way. You know, don't don't indulge. He never indulged, but he always wanted to go with me. So a few years had passed, and one day I was in the country standing up on the block where I be standing at. And I saw a truck coming up, and I was I knew who truck it was. But on the passenger side, it was Moss. It made me sick to my stomach. I mean, my stomach turned and a knot to see him. And when he got out, he came, he walked straight up to me. What's up, cuz? And I was like, man, what you doing up here, man? He was like, man, I got tired of being home, man. You know, I want to do, do better by my mama. It ain't no way, you know, I ain't get no love showed to me down, down home or whatever. So I just felt so bad. But he whispered something to me, almost in the midst of my friend that brought him. He said, now that I'm here with you, I ain't never leaving. I ain't leaving until you leave. I want to get paid. And I knew he meant that. So he was with me 95% of the time he was with me. And his personality is so magnetic for the first time in his life. Women, he saw that women didn't care how he walked. His personality was all that counted. So that made it even better for him. But it also brought him a lot of hate because other guys probably couldn't see why a woman would be attracted to him. But he was, he, he was a beautiful guy. And uh, one day, I was home watching a football game in the country, and he busted in the house. And I was like, what's going on? He had his arm was skinned up or whatever. And uh, I said, he say, I was riding on a bicycle, and this guy drove up on me, and he flinched the car. And it made me fall into the street. And he was like, man, you got something in here, man. Give me a, give me, give me some fire, man, so I can go straighten this dude and let this dude know where I come from or whatever. I said, no, nah, I don't do that. What's the, what's the guy's name? And I went and straightened the dude. And I remember telling him this. Look, nigga, if you ever in your life, ever in your life come five feet around him again, I'll do something to you, man. You'll regret for the rest of your life, man. Not me. I won't regret it. Don't, don't, don't bother with my friend, man. He don't bother with nobody, man. So I went back to the house after threatening this guy and told him, told my friend Moss, look, you stay in. You don't do nothing. Just stay in the house. Let me do everything. He was like, man, how am I make? I say, look, whatever you got, I'll sell it for you. I just don't want you to get in no trouble. So let's fast forward to now he's staying in and you know, his money wasn't like he wanted it to be. I told him, we devised a plan. I said, Moss, look, I'm going down and me going down four or five times a month. I'll pay you a thousand dollars a load to drive back. Cause you know, I ain't got no license. So he was like, yeah, man, that sounds like a good idea. So make a long story short again, we went down, trip was fine. Came back, trip was fine. We did it for a few months. So much to, to I had already built up. 
I built myself up, you know. And um, we went down one time, and I told him, Moss, you got to stop. Excuse me. I said, you got to stop tailgating me, man. You riding too close to me. So you got to stay back. So I scored. I gave him the thing, typical routine, and we headed north. And heading north, right where a certain interstate and a certain pay toll place merge into each other. I saw a car. I'm a veteran on the road. I know how to look and see. I looked in my rear view mirror and seen a car in the outside lane and I noticed the headlights and it was riding at extremely, extremely high speed. And I was brake lighting Moss to get off me. And he didn't get off me and the car got right up on us and measured us off and got behind him and pulled him. I felt so bad, instantly my, my stomach just got in a, it got in a runt. My, my stomach just got in a runt. I, I, I drove. So for about a mile or two, maybe three miles, four miles, Moss didn't stop. The police was behind him, he didn't stop. He never stopped. So finally he pulled over. When he pulled over, I didn't know I stopped up ahead three or four X's up to look down from a gas station to see if I could see him passing on the overpass, and I thought maybe I saw him. And when I got back on the road trying to speed to catch a car that I thought that resembled his car, I ran into a roadblock. Police, they boxed me in, one in the front, one on the left side, one on the right, and one in the back. So they draw guns on me, told me to get out. I had my son in the car with me. And when I got out the car, and saw this DEA agent come from the county of where I saw them stop him at. I knew they had him. They had my guy. So they arrested me for driving with no license. They tried to question me about uh, my affiliation or, or, what, or what they just found in the car, whatever I told them. I ain't know what they was talking about. They took my son, took him to HRS, took me to jail. They charged me with driving with suspended license. I mean, driving with no valid driver's license. License was suspended. But anyhow, the next day I was out. I got out. I went home. And when I, by the time I made it back, he called me. Moss called me and told me what's going on. They stopped him, this and that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he was giving me all the, you know, legalities of what, what, what he was facing or whatnot. And I wanted to come on here and tell anybody that's hustling that my guy of Haitian descent, born in the Bahamas, with a messed up leg and a messed up hand, told the feds where to stick it at, told them don't bother me, told them to let me go. I'm like his brother from another mother.